Hey Scrappers, welcome to another video. Thank you for 400 subscribers. And as stated, as promised, we shall take apart this x-ray machine. And we're going to jump straight into it. Jane's here again. As Hi. It's, as it's Tuesday. So let's go. So we'll start by taking um, that lid off, but in order to do so we have to remove the cable that's um, holding it. Yeah, connected to it. No, the lights are off because they can make a test now. And that both cable. And then green one. You do your side first, you remove your screws for that hinge, and when you press on the thing so it doesn't run ahead. Okay, so, so you are prepared for dinner though, eh, Jenny? I am prepared for dinner. England's chicken. So, is that very heavy? I don't know, I'll find out when I've got it by myself. Yeah, I suppose that's always a telltale sign. Eh? So this is the last screw jenny. Right, well, let's try it. You got it? Yeah. Just stick it on the table. So what we'll do now guys is we'll just cut all of those cables off so that we can get that circuit board out of there and it'll allow us to free up this cable here. And 
the ones below it too. Okay. So there's not a lot of value on this board, as you can see it's pretty much just um, traces, lead, terminals and your capacitor. So they can just go straight, um, you know, once you take the terminals off, they can go straight into the um, scrap board pile. So now we'll try to attempt to remove this transformer off that panel there by lifting the whole panel out. Nice big um, chunk of steel there in the laminations. just traces and um, I think there's a like a form of thermostat so we'll remove those all later on as well And now we're on to these big cable glands here, which I think might be electrodes from the fact that they insert into those three pins down there. I'm not sure if you guys can see them. But yeah, it's a bit weird. And there's two of them, of course, obviously. So I think there are electrodes. And there's quite possibly a massive transformer down inside here, which is which would make sense. So what we'll do once we clean that up is we'll begin to take the lid off here if we can take the lid off and see what we've got inside. Alright, so that's just defeating the purpose then. Yeah. 
So what we have to do, guys, is have a look see. Drink this one? No, just leave that one. We'll have a look see and see what's on the other side. Try and tip this upside down, perhaps. So, so we've decided to try and make it a little bit lighter by taking off that um, the arm that had the actual X-ray appendage on it. So we'll lift that off, make it lighter, put that outside somewhere. What we did here is we had to remove the split pins that were holding this bar in that the um, cables rolled on because unfortunately it's acting as a stop down there to get the um, arm for the head of the x-ray machine itself off. See what happens. Yep. Got it. Got it. We've removed, as you can see, that big slide that the head of the x-ray machine would have been attached to and we um, moved it around to the other side here so what we need to do now is remove those four bolts or four screws there and then we will um, go around back to the other side and remove those and then from there we will proceed to lift it up from what you can see in here we needed to use the weight of the transformer, I assume this is a transformer because it's filled with oil and we need to use it to pull it, push itself out because we can't lift it by ourselves so what we'll do is we'll tip it up hopefully it falls um, and the reason we did it this way against the handles is because underneath there is a steel lip where it's going to sit and slide off of whereas if we were to tip it either on its other sides it would have got caught up underneath these um, protruding securing points. So let's make a start on the back end and we'll come back to the front end and see how it all works out for us. There's a nice electric motor here that if you wanted to, you could use it to move the X-ray machine rather than wheel it everywhere. So we'll definitely be removing that too.
just bend that spring out. Really. There we go, that's all off there. So the next step is pretty much HE to lift it up. Hopefully that transformer slides out. Hopefully. So now we will attempt to use the weight of the machine to lift itself up um, so that we can remove the big transformer that's in there and hopefully it'll work. Otherwise I'm out of ideas. Because I don't have a forklift and I'm not strong enough by myself to pull that transformer out. So here goes guys. So there we go, it's all out. Bit of a amateurish way of doing it, but as I say, I don't have the proper equipment, crane or forklift to lift it out, so we have to make it do this way. Hey guys, so we've got the lid bolts out and now we're attempting to lift the core out. We're going to put the place, place the core into this bucket here and hopefully we can get it out so that it can drain out into this bucket and then we'll deal with it from there once it's drained out relatively well. So let's get into it, let's try and lift this out. You ready Jenny? Ready as ever babe. No. Oh. They're safety boots, not slippers, okay? Sorry, safety boots. <laughs> yeah, this is what I used to do when I... That thing. Good job. Yep. Mm. So, that went well. It went better than I thought. I thought there was going to be a big mess. So what I'll quickly do guys is I'll take you off the stand. So the next part of this video will be a continuation of us removing the the motor out of the body and hopefully this has um, drained enough and we can start looking at it more closely to remove all of the fantastic copper and brass that will possibly be in there and we'll also continue to remove and further break down the parts that we initially took off like the um, the top half that you saw us do. Okay. 
right guys here we go just undid these hinge bolts hopefully we can just lift this straight out now So I've got the circuit board out guys, and as you can see there's quite a bit of componentry available on it, from your relays to your um, negative and positive capacitors, to the rheostats, an amp meter, heat sinks, a transformer, and these um, forms of transistors essentially they're known as silicone monolithic operational ICs. Um, I did a quick Google and I'll show you the schematic and a bit of information on them in a minute but they're um, obsolete according to the data sheet but here they are in case you were wondering so some of them have gold legs but according to the description yes they're obsolete so what we will do is we will begin to take off some of the stuff speed it up of course and we'll slow down when um, there's a need to you know explain something or something that might be of interest so let's go Just notice something guys, um, if you can see that as well, these little, gold pins. these little gold pins here, I'm not sure if you can see that, and I'm not sure if they're actually gold pins, but need nonetheless, there's quite a few of them, there's one there, there's another one over here, there's one here, one under here. So we will just drop that out of the way. Three over here. So we just take a few of them off the board. But yeah. Not sure what they are. I wonder if they're gold or if they're brass. But we'll check that out. And we'll continue taking them off the screen. Now as for these little transistors here. Yeah, this one doesn't have the gold legs on it there'll be some value inside there so we'll take that off off the circuit board as well off screen too and we'll continue with some um, breaking 
down a couple of bits now and then we will move on to the the head or the arm of that held the x-ray head on so we'll just quickly uh, nice solid chunk of copper, sorry, a nice solid chunk of aluminium there, like it's real solid. There you go guys, a decent sized piece of lead. What does it look like on your side? Same. Is it coming out? Yeah, same. Same. Like this. Oh, there, just the slide for the heat That's a nice piece of cast stowaway. Just take all the cardboard out of it. There we go. And we'll continue quickly with some of this stuff here. There's going to be some nice, beautiful copper in, in these relays. And there's also some nice copper in that um, inductor there too. Now here, there is a contact. And I believe, just cut that. And I believe that that might be a little bit of silver. So I'll put those aside too and take those apart at a later date. 
silver out. So just the same again with this conductor here or relay, sorry. I just like to bend the steel out of the way. Expose the nice copper bit. And I grab it with the pliers and I twist and it should come away. And all you do again is just push that pin through, pull it out with your pliers, and hopefully there is a nice starting point where you don't have to cut into the the tape, otherwise you run the risk of cutting into the copper and then the copper will adhere to the tape as you rip the tape off. And it just becomes a bit of a problem. See as it started to do there for me. But that's better than what I've had in the past. And again, cut it in the middle, two halves, and peel it off. Next part will just be taking apart this transformer here. And if you've ever wondered what's inside of an ammeter, um, it's essentially just a little spool of copper around the needle. And then when it receives a voltage or a current, it magnetizes and moves up accordingly. So as Jane takes it apart, she'll show you what, it's, um, what it comprises of. This cool. In the meantime, I'll just cut up all these wires here. So that's all you get really, it's pretty much just a spool of copper. And when that magnetizes, depending on the um, incoming voltage and current, it will move that needle in the opposite direction. That's cool. So I wonder if we hit this, as you can see there's a bit of a seam there. So if we hit this, I wonder if it'll split apart nicely. Um, can you pass me my... Thank you. I can't get those parts out. I'll take it apart then. As I suspected, it's split here, but on the inside, not so much. So as you can see, it's split there, but on the inside where it counts, not so much. As I said, so I wonder if I pry on this gently, will it open that up? This to be appears to be working. There we go. Can you please hit that with the um okay. Right and now we can all strip it down guys. Nice big chunk of iron or steel so this bit I'll fast forward so
So these joins that you see here in the copper wire is pretty much the um, bridging points and that's how you get your different forms of voltages through your transformer. So there you go guys, all done, all unwound. Out of curiosity, I do a bit of clean up quickly, to show you the mess that we've made. Give the shaking. As you can see, all the coppers all over the floor here. So what I'll do is I'll quickly wind it all up. Welcome back guys. So after a quick clean up, I'm making the copper all look, look a little bit more uniform and not just a strewn mess all over the floor. Here we have the scales. So my guess was 500 grams, and Jane's guess is 700 grams. So let's quickly weigh it all up and see how much we got. So there you have it guys. One and a half kilograms worth of copper and that big chunky transformer that you saw us taking apart here on the bench. There'll probably be a little bit more as well because there's still some copper contained in those relays and there was a transformer that I um, couldn't quite get one of the bolts out and I stripped the head because it was um, lacquered into place or varnished in place. So I'll do that off screen. So I hope that was a bit of fun for you all. It certainly was interesting for me. Thank you so very much to everybody who has helped me get up to 400 subscribers. It really means a lot. And Jane thanks you too. Thank you guys. Keep subscribing. Hope that was a bit of fun for you all. Look after yourselves. And I'll catch you all in the next one. Cheers. Bye.